I was 17 when I moved into Harvard. It's 6 a.m. on August 20th, leaving to my new home in America. I'm really excited. Now granted, I turned 18 about a week later, but I was a baby. It's pretty funny to look back on pictures and videos from this time. In many ways, I was really immature and unprepared for what college was going to throw my way. But I think I had to be. I was at Harvard in person for two years. My first year, which kind of culminated in this experience of my YouTube channel blowing up at the end of the year, and my second year, which was marked at the beginning of the year, by heartbreak. I didn't really talk about it on social media because social media is really weird with relationships. It was messy and I didn't know how to deal with the emotions and I especially didn't know how to deal with it with YouTube going on, with school going on, and I felt like I just needed a break from the chaos. So I made it through that year, but I decided to take a year off. I took a voluntary leave of absence from Harvard and I went to Montreal. And in Montreal, I worked on some really fun projects. I did some art projects, I did some AI projects, I did a bunch of YouTube work. I made some amazing friends. It was a really rewarding experience and one in which I felt I matured a lot. I think just being outside of college, outside of school, for the first time really in my life, this was a time where I realized, hey, you know, I can survive in the real world. <laughs> and then about halfway through that year, I started to see these news articles pop up in my group chats about some virus that was showing up overseas. We all kind of know how that one turned out. It completely derailed any plans that I had and, you know, changed that year entirely. But in many ways, it was also a maturing experience for me, seeing these opportunities being taken away from me and having to figure out, okay, how do I navigate this as a young person who suddenly can't see any friends or anything? And one of the things that I had to decide was, okay, do I go back to Harvard for online classes because the classes were not being offered in person? Or do I take another year off? There were a bunch of factors that I considered, and in the end I decided to go back to school, which, retrospectively looking back now, I think was a mistake. I think I was overly optimistic about my chances of returning to campus. I thought there was a pretty good chance that I'd end up back on campus in the spring, which I did not. And I think I was also overly optimistic about myself and my ability to deal with Zoom classes and to really engage with them. I did my best, but it was, it was a really hard time and a really hard year. Um, and to be honest, also my fault, I didn't really take care of myself that well. And especially in the final few months of that year, I really, really struggled. And it makes sense, right? I was spending so many hours of my day just staring at a computer screen, doing this kind of what felt like menial work. Um, and I wasn't taking time to dive into passions. I wasn't taking that much time to connect with friends. Um, obviously really, you know, things that were made much more difficult due to the pandemic, but it was just overall a, a tough situation. And that brings us to this summer. Now, junior summer, if you're following the traditional Harvard trajectory, is typically a summer where you figure out what you're doing full-time, especially if you're working in finance or consulting. You get your internship that then turns into a full-time offer post-grad. Not everyone does this. It's definitely the traditional route, but I haven't really followed the traditional route for a few years now. But I definitely felt this pressure, and for me it was also a pressure of I didn't feel like I was doing anything meaningful by the end of the school year, and so I felt, okay, let's double down, let's take on more, when in reality I was pretty much just burnt out. I figured this out pretty quickly though. I realized that, okay, I'm not really in a position to be throwing a whole lot more on my shoulders, especially given that I have only one year left, and I have these kind of regrets, especially about taking a year online, I really want to cherish the next year and to really savor these moments. And I'm not gonna do that if I'm coming into the school year completely burned out, completely drained. And so I made the decision to kind of back off a little bit this summer and to really re-engage with passions and with my friends and family and really focus on entering the school year with a recharged battery, not one that needs charging desperately. You know, I've worked really hard and I've been really lucky from a financial and a career standpoint with YouTube, with investments that I've made, with products that I've sold, etc that I'm in a pretty comfortable position financially and after college I have a bunch of different options that I could pursue full-time that would be really fulfilling and really rewarding. I, I don't have to worry about that so much, as much as it's important and something that I'll have to think about, obviously. It's not like it's going away anytime soon. But what is going away is my chance to actually appreciate what I have in the moment. When I think about where I was when I took the year off from school, I had really, up to that point, been rushing forward with everything in my life. It was all future-oriented. What's next? What's next? What's next? You know, just jumping my way into a career. And along the way, I think I forgot to nourish myself, and I forgot to cherish my friendships, and to really appreciate the opportunities around me, which were plentiful. There were so many cool things that I was really lucky to experience, and I was always just focused on what's next. More, 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 more. And that's a mindset that just completely depletes you, because it's never enough. 
when you're always looking for more, it's kind of the scarcity mindset of like, I need more, I need more, I need more. And you fail to realize that what you have is amazing. Now, I've been away from Harvard longer than I was ever there, which is a little bit crazy and definitely a little bit intimidating for me. A lot of the friends that I entered school with have now graduated and they're on to living their lives. In fact, most of my friends have graduated. So in many ways, it feels like it's freshman year all over again. I'm going into a place that's gonna be filled with strangers, wonderful strangers, wonderful opportunities, but I think I'm coming in now with an extra four years of life and a bunch of advantages on my side. One of those advantages, even though I do regret doing online school, I finished my degree during online school. All my requirements, I got them out of the way. And so this year I can take whatever courses I want. I have eight courses, there's only one requisite that I have to take, so of those eight, seven of them are just optional courses. I can take electives in any subject that I find interesting. And another thing that I think the time and the maturity has brought is that things don't feel so high stakes anymore. I remember when I came into college, it felt like everything that I was doing, every aspect of my life was super high stakes. I had to take the right classes, I had to get the right grades, I had to make the right friends, get the right job, I had to, you know, marry my high school girlfriend, all of this. And if any one of those things failed, everything would fall apart. And it's just not true. And I think the nicest thing about lowering the stakes like that is that it allows you to really appreciate where you are. You know, rather than being so focused on how do I get the A+, plus, how do I get the internship, and so on. I feel like, hey, I have some amazing friends. I have some amazing opportunities here. And let me cherish those things. Not to neglect everything else, but to put into context that, hey, life is about a lot more than just making the exact perfect decisions and following the optimal trajectory. One of the things I've learned over the last four years is that life is just messy, and it always will be. There will always be problems, no matter how well you set yourself up, how perfect things look on paper, life happens, and you'll never attain that perfection. But that doesn't mean you can't have a great life. So from a logistical standpoint, because some of you might be curious about this, uh, what's happening this year is pretty straightforward, actually. It's pretty much a normal year of college um, with a few restrictions. So I head down in, I think, 25 days. Um, every student at the college is required to be doubly vaccinated, um, unless they have some exemption, of course. And there will also be mandatory on-campus testing and mask policies, um, just to keep the campus safe. But we're going to be moving back into dorms. It looks like classes are going to be primarily in person. And I'm super hyped for it. So if you're interested in following along on this journey, feel free to subscribe. There's definitely going to be a bunch of college-related content. I can't promise anything about the consistency of that as I adjust to life back on campus. My priority is definitely going to be living life first, then making content. But this is a passion of mine. I love making videos and I want to get more creative with it again because I feel like for a while it's just been me talking to a camera. I haven't been able to go anywhere, do anything, and that's hopefully going to change. I'd now like to thank HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. They have a variety of seasonal recipes and they send those recipes as well as the fresh ingredients required to make them straight to your door so that you can do the cooking without the hassle of the planning and the grocery shopping. These recipes are delicious. I made this Portuguese pan chicken for myself and my sister and we really loved it. All the produce was super fresh right when it arrived and we had everything that we needed to make an amazing meal. And this saves a ton of time. Not only did we not have to plan the meal, but we also didn't have to go to the grocery store and get the right ingredients. We could just get started. It was all on one pan and it was ready and done about 30 minutes, which was pretty amazing. And most importantly, it's flexible. It fits your lifestyle because for me, I actually like planning and I like going to the grocery store and, and choosing meals, but doing that every day can get a little bit overwhelming when you're in the middle of school and work and, and life. And so it's really nice to have these options on those really busy days when you don't wanna go through that whole process, but you know you're still gonna have a healthy, fresh and delicious meal. It just won't take that much time. So if this sounds interesting to you, I have a pretty amazing offer for you. If you go to hellofresh.com and you use code JOHNFISH14, you're gonna get 14 free meals, including free shipping. So that's hellofresh.com, use code JOHNFISH14, and you'll get 14 meals, including free shipping. So with that, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Uh, feel free to subscribe, feel free to like, leave a comment. I'm John Fish. I'll see you again soon.